in today's episode. Aloha, Bill here from Nostalgic Inclination, the channel dedicated to you, all creatives, artists, musicians, and otherwise. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and if you're returning, great to see you again. I wonder if you can guess what today's challenge theme is, and I will tell you it's not the state of Wyoming. We have an eruptive episode today where we'll be painting a volcano and we will be playing music in the theme of Hawaii. So let's just get straight to it. I wanted to use these neon paints by Deco Art in the 1980s episode, but they didn't fit, so I figured I'd use them now in the Hawaiian episode. I'm using an 8x10 pre-stretched canvas. We will get to stretching our own canvas. I have a giant roll in the corner of my studio, but I need stretcher bars and I'd like to use up my inventory. Here I'm applying the acrylic gesso. I apply it a little bit thicker than necessary, but that's no problem. I just work it in a little bit harder. I start with thalo blue at the top. The color is very strong, so you want to be careful not to get it where you don't want it. Gradiating downward, I add violet, painting horizontally across the canvas. Now we're going to use some of this sizzling pink. Notice, I apply below the violet and work up to the violet so I can have some pure pink in the center of the gradation. The process is the same for the scorching yellow. These colors really make the canvas pop. I'm enjoying it already. It's these little things that get you excited that make you want to put your best into the project. From the bottom of the canvas to the yellow, I apply titanium white. As the paint dries, you can reapply on the previous areas, getting that gradient exactly the way that you want it. Now I'm adding a little sky blue with some titanium white at the bottom of the painting. Thinning titanium white with some water, I flick on stars to the top of the canvas. Now we paint the outline of the volcano. Just a swift, simple, visualize it and put it on the canvas. We're using Payne's Gray, which looks black, but it's a very dark gray with some blue characteristics. Remember with acrylic paint, it's always nice to paint in layers. We begin with the underpainting and we'll add the details later. It feels good to be creating again. I had all the plans in the world and then a health issue struck and I was out for a week, but I'm as good as new now. My situation made me realize that no matter what, without our health, we have nothing. The reason I make these videos is because I would like to help people on the edge and let them know that they too can create if they want. You do not have to be an accomplished artist or musician to make art and music. I'm using vermilion for the lava. It's a very nice color. It's in the red orange family. I sometimes confuse red and orange, maybe a little bit of undiagnosed color blindness. Like with the volcano, the lava is also done in layers. When we add the lava running down the side of the volcano, we're also determining the shape and contour of the volcano. You get to decide that. You are the creator. Now I'm mixing Payne's gray and titanium white, and I'm gonna to start to add smoke into the lava plume. Remember, we're working in layers, so don't expect a finished product right off the bat. I wanted to mention the sad passing of Taylor Hawkins. I was devastated to learn of this last night. Life is fragile and precious. If you are struggling with addiction, please seek help. Your life is worth living, not only for yourself, but for your loved ones as well. We are variating different shades of Payne's gray, titanium white, and vermilion. Here I'm flicking some specks of vermilion because lava does not shoot out clean. We're now gonna fine tune our lava plume. Again, sticking with the Payne's gray, titanium white, and vermilion in various shades and gradients. Feel free to experiment with different types of brush strokes. Since we're painting in layers, if it doesn't work out, you can always go over top of it. I like the way this one is turning out, though. We're going to add some highlights to the volcano with some titanium white. Just working out the contour in between the lava flows. Adding more lava and more titanium white. Without even cleaning the brush, we're gonna make some smoke rings with that titanium white in the lava plume. 
we're going to do U's, C's, and O's. And it might look a little ridiculous, but the human eye always seems to correct what it wants to see. Finally, we're going to darken our color up with some more Payne's Gray and add some smoke veins. I will do the final touches off camera. Please stay tuned for the final reveal. We're working again in my DAW of choice, Logic Pro X, and I am setting up the time signature. I use 4-4 for the main section and 6-4 for the B section. First, we record our ukulele. There was a humming noise coming from my computer that came through on that video recording, so I EQ'd it out, but it sounds a little telephoned. It will not sound like that in the final recording. I like to keep my ukulele part simple. One, because I'm not a pro ukulele player, and two, because I'm gonna double the track so it's easy to play the same thing twice if you keep it simple. You do not have to spend a lot of money to get a good ukulele. Just remember, they're not all created equal. Look for playability. You want the strings close to the fretboard and you want one that stays in tune and mine checks all those boxes. That progression at the end and the beginning is called a vamp or a turnaround. Now we double the ukulele. I'll fast forward through this process as it's the same as the first time. When we think of Hawaiian music, the ukulele always comes to mind, but the steel guitar truly is what makes the music sound Hawaiian in my opinion. You'll notice I keep the riff simple again. Simple but effective. Something memorable that you can hum in your head and keeps you awake at night. In a good way, that is. You can use finger picks when playing the lap steel, but like with the ukulele, I like to just use my fingers. For this riff, I only need my thumb to strum. I'm running it through some echo and some reverb. Just have fun with it, and remember, nothing's impossible. Don't think that you can't play the lap steel. A little bit of practice and you can do anything. A quick note, I have my lap steel tuned to C6. Now we're going to move on to the bongos. Percussion is not my strongest suit, but I keep the riff simple and decisive, and I will add delay to make it sound like a much more complex piece. For the main riff, I play a 4-4 beat as seen, and then for the 6-4 B section, I just variate, as you see here. And then I add a little fill right here. Back into the main section. Simple as that. I'm going to add some Scarby bass off camera and then we'll get to the final reveal right away with no further ado. Once again, I appreciate all your support and I am so grateful to have all of you in my life. Now for the final reveal. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and aloha.